is Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Justice and righteousness in the land. In his days 
Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is out, like our righteousness. Here ends the first reading.
They went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them. And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived to heaven. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd. And he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, came to land at Gennesaret and lowered the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever he heard he was. And wherever he went, to villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all touched him. God's flock 
They were summoned by God to watch over and attend to the needs of God's chosen people, just as shepherds watch over and attend to their flock. But in the time of Jeremiah, the shepherds the Lord had appointed to attend to God's flock had failed in their shepherding tasks. It's for this reason that Jeremiah calls down on them the divine woe. As the voice messenger, Jeremiah said to them, It is you who have scattered my flock and driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. The shepherds of Jeremiah's time were, were really anti shepherds, the opposite of what God intend, had intended the shepherds of God's flock to be. Jeremiah will go on, of course, to announce, I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them. They shall not fear any longer, nor be dismayed, nor shall they be missing, says the Lord. And in the Gospel reading from Mark 6, we heard that when Jesus and his disciples tried to get away in their boat to a deserted place and wrestle them, the clamoring clouds fall, crowds followed them along the shore and met them at the landing place. The Mark tells us, as Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. The shepherds of Jesus' time, who should have been attending to the lost sheep of God's flock, were simply absent. They were even there. They didn't show up. Last Sunday's Gospel, we heard a, a, a vivid and shocking story of what Herod Antipas and the other so-called shepherds of Galilee in that time were up to. Herod Antipas was a lewd and lascivious birthday party, which culminated in the presentation of the head of John the Baptist on a platter that was all too typical of the so-called shepherds. The shepherds who should have been attending to the cries of the least, the last, the lost and the left out among God's flock were missing action. These images of the anti-shepherds or absent shepherds may lead us to ask them, who or where are the anti-shepherds or the anti or the absent shepherds or ultimately those who begin attending to accumulating their own power, wealth, or the being at the expense of the poor, powerless, and the dispossessed accounts. And who are the compassionate shepherds today who watch over and tend to the lost sheep of God's flock as Psalm 23 imagines? Where do we see the compassion of the good shepherd in the out? Jesus then invited them to come away to 
to a deserted place all by yourselves and resting. They attempted to get away by boat to a secluded place on the shore of Galilee by themselves. But the clamoring crowd got there ahead of them. It seems that Jesus sensed that his first, his 12 first 12 were spent with a team when they returned from the mission on which he had sent them. But they were experiencing what we have come to call compassion. The capacity for sympathy, empathy, and compassion was simply exhausted. They needed to escape the clamoring of the crowd for a spell to be renewed and the energy.
but anoints our head, our heads with soothing and healing oil. He makes our cups run over with his good desires. We gather in his presence and So as we heard in today's passage, Jesus and his disciples twice tried to save the way in their boat to a deserted place by themselves. But they felt that the crying, aching need of the wounded, weary world arrived there ahead of them. Today's gospel is also a kind of gospel sandwich, but it's a sandwich of filling. That missing filling is the story of Jesus feeding of the multitude in that uninhabited place, a story which we will hear next Sunday in John's version of the feeding of the multitude. So what we have in today's gospel is the tale of how Jesus and his first followers twice tried to get away from the world. Jesus. 
strength is it can be So when Jesus got out of the mountain, got out of the boat with the short gallery, and saw the clamoring, pleading crowd coming toward him, it was as if his heart went out to them, as if he could feel their pain and suffering in his guts. It is to the scene of God mentioned.
Thank you. 